All right, folks, we're going the Zoom route today for the Big 12. Watch. I am your host, Josh. Neighbors here. Crystal Ball College Football is the channel. Big 12 Watch is the show. Uh, parent company, 365 Sports. You all can find us wherever you guys get your podcast. So we'll have a preview of these Thursday Sweet 16 matchups and also some conference realignment chatter happening today. You all can find me wherever you guys get your podcast. Uh, the Big 12 Watch is the place to be. And then also... You all can find the show wherever you guys get your podcasts on podcast platforms in addition to YouTube. Um, so that's where you guys can find uh, the show. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel, all of those things. It helps spread the show when you all do that. Helps us grow the channel. So we appreciate those things. And uh, yeah, let's get to it. So, folks. Um, this came across the desk last week. We're just getting to it now because we've been busy with basketball stuff. Uh, and Dennis Dodd had this. And then what? Plans for Florida State Clemson remain unclear if rivals successfully exit the ACC. It says two ACC giants are exploring an exit from the league, but what could happen afterwards remains a mystery. Uh, it talks basically about Florida State exploring a potential exit was a curious move. After all, the school would even find a way to skirt around the conference's grant of rights. There's no clear path into a higher payday, SEC or Big Ten. Um, and people were kind of questioning how much value Florida State brings. To me, guys, they're a big draw. I think I look at the TV numbers and I see that, hey, Florida State's a big brand. It's a pretty good draw. And also, you like the bet on where the program currently is right now. Uh, they're just in a, a, as good of a spot as they've been in a long time. And this year, after an undefeated season, feels like the recruiting under Mike Norvell has really stepped up. Uh, I know they had some swings and misses, but they've done a good job developing players as well. They're about to put a whole gaggle of guys into the pros in this year's draft. Jared Verse, Keon Coleman, Johnny Wilson, all of those guys look to be really good players in college. And also, I think, have some outstanding potential pro credentials coming their way. So that's possible there, right? Um, Florida State basketball obviously has, has had really good years. I think it might be time for Leonard Hamilton to go. We'll see if FSU pulls the trigger on that. But Leonard Hamilton's old, maybe a mutual parting of ways. He and Larinaga at Miami, kind of two elder statesmen that may be losing their fastballs a bit too much, right? Uh, Leonard Hamilton's once again had some great teams at Florida State, but you want to see. I still think the Knowles brand is very strong. Clemson could jump the ship and go with them. And so that makes them appealing. Why? Because having a partner is always important. I think, uh, especially in these, you know, I'm not going to say that. I mean, it's not just early, but like the one story about a lot of this realignment is in, in recent memory, when has somebody gone to a major conference by having at least one partner? Now, the odd move out in this uh, in, in this theory I just posited would be SMU, but SMU going with Cal and Stanford is at least two other partners. There are two other schools going, and the big difference there is SMU was willing to flip the bill for a lot of what's going to happen with them financially, right? They're willing to flip the bill themselves. And so because of that, that's why they got to be an ad addition to a conference that's looking at maybe some potential subtraction in the ACC. So as a preemptive move, it makes sense to take an extra school, even if it's an odd number. And also, hey, folks, the ACC has had an odd number for a majority of their sports for a while now. Guess what? With who? The Notre Dame Fighting Irish, who are obviously a member of the Atlantic, Atlantic Coast Conference in most deportes, that's sports in Spanish. Uh, most sports besides besides football. They still play five ACC games every single year when it comes to football. So um, adding adding Clemson into this into this uh, equation is interesting for them. And they're now a dynamic duo, Dodd calls them, that could potentially trigger the shakeup in college football, the next big shakeup here in college football that we are looking at. And I'm going to share my screen here so you all can read along with me if you'd like. I'll still read out loud for those watching. Seminoles by themselves are not worth messing around with $60 million being handed out in revenue to schools, nor the $75 million getting paid out. Um, 
But that, that conversation cl- uh, changed with Clemson joining the conference rival and filing a lawsuit against the ACC this week, challenging the grant of rights. It's given new life to another potential uh, round of realignment. Florida State and Clemson are a dynamic duo that could potentially trigger another shakeup across college sports. If the Knowles and Tigers are deemed unworthy by the Big Ten and the SEC, perhaps even the Big 12 shows interest. Now, let's get to that in one second. In December, I wrote that Florida State extracting itself from the ACC felt like a five to 10 year process. Now, you could perhaps move that timeline up a bit since the two saber rattling schools challenging the league. That's the, that's the case now. It seems only a matter of time before the three sides come to a negotiated resolution in the nine figure range. Florida State and Clemson feel they can, at worst, buy their way out of the current ESPN rights media deal that runs through 2036. The penalty leaving the league would be a little less than $572 million. Uh, FSC administrators calculated that number in December of 23. It's clear Florida State and Clemson don't want to be in the ACC. The three parties will coexist, but they won't like it. Now attention turns to whether the conference's financials can withstand the heat in the long term as the league has countersued both schools. So let's see what the, uh, you know, kind of the uh, the end is there, right? Uh, We know that, hey, Texas and Oklahoma found their way out and they paid their way out of the league. We know that obviously Washington, uh, Oregon, UCLA and USC left, but their league thing was coming up. Right. So, uh, you know, the big question is you kind of look at what's next. Right. And so something Dennis Dodd discussed is um, the Big 12 side of things. And he says, while the goal for FSU and Clemson is to join the Big Ten or SEC, the Big 12 could serve as a fallback plan. But if the Knowles and Tigers aren't worth that $60 million per year for the SEC, which seems to be the minimum cover change to make the move, why would they take less money to join the ACC, to leave the ACC? A Big 12 union seems possible of rights holders will be willing to increase the value of the league's media rights deal. Its teams are currently set to earn $32 million per year, lowest among the Power Four. That's a revenue gap of $28 million with the SEC and 43 of the Big Ten. So Dennis Dodd is putting this out there as a possibility, but I think he's putting it out there mostly as a possibility that we should cross off the list. Okay, because... I think about this from multiple standpoints. ESPN. Why would ESPN want this? Well, uh, if they want Florida State and Clemson in their biggest league they currently have the rights to, that would be the SEC. That's where they would want them to go because Clemson and FSU are still pretty big television draws. All right? So if you're ESPN, you want to keep them on the ESPN family of networks. The Big Ten does not provide that. College football playoff does, right? So <laughs> they go through their Big Ten schedule, make the CFP. They would be in the playoff, which is on your family of networks. That's great. But uh, the good news is the Big 12, it's still on your family of networks, S- it, partially. SEC on your family of networks. But I think overall, if you're ESPN, you want to keep them in the ACC because, man, it's just such a good deal. It's such a good bargain to have those two schools now. That same logic could have applied to the Big 12, but, you know, you move them over to the SEC. Big 12 steps up financially in terms of how much money they're getting per year, but it's not a large step up for the Big 12. And so from that perspective, that standpoint, you're kind of still thinking, ah, okay, it was a step up. It was a, it was a move up for the Big 12, but they didn't make a whole lot more money. And now the ESPN gets to create better matchups. So the SEC is what they would want the most. The Big 12 guys, I mean, if things have become so untenable with the uh, with the ACC, they have to get out. They go to the Big 12. But why are you moving for the same amount of money? Isn't the whole point of this move to make sure you have the resources? And if you're going to need outside funding, why would outside funding come in if you're going to the Big 12 where – look like the rights holders might boost up what the Big 12 is getting, but it's not going to be enough money to where private equity would come in and fund it because where's the long-term balance for them? Where's the long-term value for them? 
The whole point for the schools is to win. They have to make more money to win, it feels like at this point in time. For private equity, the whole point is to make money. If you're not making more money, why are we funding you trying to win, right? Winning makes the money. You know, money feeds the equity. It's, it's a cycle that feeds itself. So that's my big point here with all this is I just don't see the Clemson and Florida State. The, hey, could it happen in, if feasibly? I mean, in some world, crazy shit's happened. Um, that's why I, I, I use the term shit. I don't like to curse a whole lot, but crazy shit's happened. I just don't see crazy shit happening in this instance. I just don't see that. Uh, talking of crazy things, let's talk about basketball. Because last week, to me, was not that crazy. This week, the good news of not having a whole lot of crazy basketball is it sets up for tremendous contests tonight. And we've got four of them that, to me, very exciting. A couple more exciting than others. I think a Big 12 team is involved in the best game. Um, Clemson and Arizona looks like it could be a fun one. I'm thinking two team tease early on. I might tease a little Clemson. Or I might tease a little Arizona and UConn action earlier on in these games. Um, Clemson, Arizona, future Big 12 schools. So I think we're kind of rooting for Arizona to do well, right? We want Arizona as good as possible. I mean, if you add a team in Arizona that has just won an AF championship where they a Big 12 school and they won, no, but they are becoming a Big 12 school. So it actually could want to kind of help your narrative about the Big 12 being the best basketball conference. UConn has been kicked around, sure. San Diego State was kicked around as well. They match up in a rematch of the last national championship game. Notice this, though. I like this a lot right here. Carolina and Alabama. You've got a total of 173 a half. UConn at <laughs> UConn and San Diego State. UConn and San Diego State, a total of 136 and a half. Uh, a nearly 40 point gap in the total there. That reflects what kind of contest Las Vegas thinks that we're going to see. And finally, 909 on TBS and True TV. It is Iowa State and Illinois. 909 Central Time is a ludicrous time for this game to start, but I'm expecting a really fun game. Two really well matched teams. Illinois is about the offense. I would say about a combination of both, but mostly about the clamps that they put on you on the defensive side of things. With that being said, you know, I love the way Illinois has looked as of late. I really, really do. Iowa State, though, is, is a team that I think can attack. Um, they can attack in multiple ways. You got to contain Damask and you've got to contain Coleman Hawkins. You have to hope it's an off Coleman Hawkins night. If Coleman Hawkins looks bothered, if Coleman Hawkins is not on his game, I think Iowa State wins. Not handily, but I think they win. So that's what you have to hope for here. That's what I think we'll decide tonight's Sweet 16 matchup. All right, that'll do it for today's show. Make sure you follow us on Twitter at NWPod365. You guys can find me at Josh Neighbors underscore. Find the show wherever you get your podcast and on YouTube as well. All right, folks, we'll talk at you manana.